Hi! This video will show you how to solve linear equations and inequalities. Alright, let's get started. We'll start with some easy stuff here. I'm going to give you a simple linear equation, and then I want you to pause the video, try to solve it, and then I'll solve it out. Okay, here we go. 4x plus 1 equals 15. Try it out. Pause the video. Okay, are you back? Did you get x equals 7 and a half? That's what I got. Let's check it out. Okay, to solve an equation like this, the first thing you want to do is subtract 1 from both sides. Brings you down to 4x is equal to 14. On the next step, what you're going to do is divide both sides by 4. Divide by 4, divide by 4. Then you get x equals 14 over 4. But wait, when I ask you for an answer, I'll usually ask for it in a simplified or exact form. This is not simplified because there's a common factor of 2. So you're going to want to change that to 7 over 2. That's a simplified exact form of the solution. Or, if you like, 3.5. x is equal to 7 over 2 or 3.5. Did you get it? Now, maybe you got an answer, but you're not exactly sure if you got the right answer. Keep in mind that when you're doing something like this, you can always check your work. And how you're going to check your work is plug it back in. Okay, so we got the answer that x was equal to 7 over 2. What we're going to do is take the original statement, which said that 4x plus 1 is equal to 15. Okay, and then we're going to perform a check here by plugging in the value that we got for the answer and asking our calculator is 4 times 7 over 2 plus 1 is that equal to 15? Did you bring your calculator? I got mine right here. Okay, so what you're going to do is just type it in on that thing right there is 4 times 7 over 2 plus 1 equal to 15? Yeah, it sure is. So I know I got the right answer, okay? I want you to always check your work. That's so important. I'm going to write that right there. Always check your answer, if at all possible, okay? Now that was a simple one. I've got some other examples that are a little more complicated here. Let's try one where we have x's on both sides of the equation, okay? So what happens if we have x's on this side? And then maybe some more x's on that side. And you can see I've got a multiplicative constant here outside of parentheses. So when you're solving this one out, you're going to want to be really careful and make sure you factor this through and then continue with the steps that we saw on that one. Go ahead and pause the video and try this and then unpause it and I'll give you the answer. Alright, so let's see how you did this one. I'll go through a step by step. This side I'm going to leave it alone at first. Focusing on this side, I'm going to factor it out. So that gives me a 5x plus 5. Okay, similar to that one over there, except I've got x's on both sides. So I'm going to want to take care of that by moving all the x's either to this side or to the other side, whatever your preference is. Usually I'm going to bring it over to that side there, so that means I'm going to subtract 5x, subtract 5x, x minus 5x, that's a negative 4x. I'm going to do the same thing with the 5, subtracting 5 from here, subtracting 5 from here. Actually, there's exactly 5 on both sides, so those two are going to just straight cancel out, and I'm going to get 0 on the other side. That's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. I would still divide both sides by negative 4, just like this, and that's going to tell me that x is equal to 0. Did you get that? Did we get that? Who knows until we really check our work, okay? So same thing, we're going to check our work, we're going to perform that check, and we're going to say is 0 plus 5 equal to 5 times the quantity 0 plus 1? Is that true? Sure, sure it is. So I know I got the right answer. Always check your work every time you can, okay? Alright, I'm going to go into one more on this side here, and I hope that as you're watching these videos, you're actually um, pausing the video and trying to do this on your own. That's the only way you're going to really know if you're getting this stuff, okay? So I'm going to put this one up here. This one, a little more complicated than the last two, 
simply because there's fractions involved as well. There's x's on both sides and you see the fractions as well. Okay, so here we have 3x plus 1, that whole thing divided by 2. On this side, x divided by 3 and then subtracting 3 there. Go ahead and pause the video and try to solve this one out. Okay, and you're back, and um, I wonder how you attempted to do this one. The first thing that I would always like to do is just get rid of all the fractions. I don't want to deal with fractions unless I really have to. Um, so if I see some fractions here, I'm going to multiply the whole thing but what, by what they call the lowest common denominator. Okay, so that's the smallest number that I can multiply both sides of the equation by such that there will be no fractions left. And you can see with a divided by 3 here, divided by 2 here, the LCD for this is going to be 6. That means if I did choose the route of getting rid of all the fractions first, I would take both sides of the equation here and I would multiply everything by 6. Okay? So, multiplying everything by 6 on this side over here, the 6 and the 2 cancel, and what I really get is 3 times 3x plus 1 on that side. Okay? Now on this side you got to be careful, this is mixed. Some of it has fractions, some of it does not have fractions. So I'm going to be really careful when I write this out. I'm going to put the 6 that I multiplied both sides by on the outside and I'm going to use parentheses here. And just like on that problem over there, I'm going to factor it through and see what I got. These ones cancel the 6 and the 3 to give me a 2 on top here, so that's a 2x. But keep in mind that this cancellation doesn't apply to this 3 because this 3 wasn't a part of the fraction. So then I have to do separately minus 6 times 3, which is 18. So I get 2x minus 18 on that side. Over here on this side, again, very carefully, I'm going to factor through each term. 9x plus 3. Okay. Now I've got myself in a situation where I'm going to want to put all the x's on one side, all the numbers on the other side. Um, so I'm going to bring this over, 9x minus 2x, that gives me a 7x. Negative 18 minus another 3, okay, uh, minus 21. So then i got a negative 21 on that side, and then I can see that I'm going to divide by 7, divide by 7, turns I get x equals negative 3. Did I do it right? Again, the best way to figure out if you've really done it right is to always check your work. You've come up with a statement that x is going to equal negative 3. Well, if I put it way back in with the problem that I started with, it should work out. I'll leave that one for you guys to check. Okay, so that's solving linear equalities, actually. Now I'm going to speak about linear inequalities. I hope you guys are feeling comfortable so far with this material. Okay, so now we're going to focus on the inequalities part of it. And the difference there is that it's not an equal sign anymore. Now it's going to be a less than, greater than. There's all different types of inequalities. First let me write down what the different types are. Inequalities. We got four different types here. We got greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, and less than or equal to. Those are your four different categories of inequalities. And I'll start us off just with a simple example. Maybe we've got 2x is less than 8. If 2x is less than 8, then what can x be? Well, I'm just going to divide by 2, divide by 2. x is less than 4. That one was really simple with the algebra, but I would also like you to keep in mind that when you get an answer for a linear inequality, this is actually more than one value for x. This whole time with all these inequalities, we've been getting one exact value for x that we can check and we know our answer is going to be right, well we hope it's going to be right when we check it out. In this case I have a statement, an inequality statement, that x is less than 4, so what is it? 3, 2, negative 17. Really, you want to visualize the solutions to inequalities on a number line. Okay, here's 0 right in the middle. Here's the number 4. And the answer I got here is that x is less than 4. So I'm going to shade this in. Um, and notice that x cannot be equal to 4 here. 
And the reason is because the original statement had a strict less than sign, not a less than an equal sign. So I cannot use the exact number 4. So when I graph that on the number line, I'm going to keep that in mind by using an open circle for the 4 and then shading in everything that's less than the 4. Sometimes you may see it visualized this way. Same number line, same 0, same 4. The only thing that might be different is instead of an open circle, you might see an open parenthesis like that, a curved parenthesis, and then it going down like that. Okay? So before we go on to a couple more examples, I'll just show you the same problem, but with a less than or equal sign, so you can see how that would look on the number line to contrast it with this. Alright, so let's go into the same equation, but 2x is less than or equal to 8. Okay, same thing over here. We already know the answer is going to be that x is less than or equal to 4, almost the same thing we had over there. The difference is, you see these two visualizations of the answer, x less than 4. Now I want to visualize the answer x less than or equal to 4. Okay, here's 0, here's the number 4. If I was going with circles, instead of an open circle, I would want to use a filled-in circle where the filled-in part represents the fact that the number 4 is an okay solution. So instead of an open circle, I'm going to color in the circle and then put the line like that, less than. Or, if you like to use the notation of parentheses, you no longer want to use the curved open parentheses. If you're going that route, you're going to want to use the square bracket. So everybody look at the difference between the open parentheses I used there and the square bracket that I used on this one right here. And then, of course, you're going to shade in the proper direction. If the answer was greater than, I would be shading on the other side. The answer is less than, so I'm shading on that side. Okay, so before I throw more complicated ones at you, I want to remind you of one more rule about inequalities, and that is the negative dividing by a negative number rule. Do you guys remember that rule? Remember what that was? Let's try the same type of problem again, but instead of 2x, I'm going to say, what if negative 2x is less than or equal to 8? Just changed it a little bit. Um, in each one of these problems, I just divided by 2. In this problem over here, I need to divide by a negative number. Here's the thing about inequalities. Whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number, you must change the direction of the inequality. Does that sound familiar? Don't forget to do that, because if you do forget, then you're actually going to shade the wrong reason, the wrong region for the answer. Okay? So, um, to show you that, I'm going to divide by negative 2 on both sides. And then, when I write down the new answer, x, I'm not going to write down less than anymore. I'm flipping it to greater than or equal, and then put the negative 4 there. Okay? So, don't forget to flip that sign. Now, when you flip the sign, you don't do anything to the equals part of it. Which is to say that if it was less than or equals... Once you multiply it or divide it by a negative, it's greater than or equals. Okay, so if there wasn't equals, there stays in equals. If there was not an equals, just change the problem a little bit, then when you flip the sign, there will not be an equals anymore. Okay, so that sign flip thing doesn't really um, change anything to do with the equals part. Whether it's there or not will still be the same. You just got to flip it around. And so I'll just illustrate the solution to this. Here's the number 0, here's the negative 4 over here, and if I'm going with the problem where there is not an equal sign included, then I'll use the open circle, or I will use the um, parentheses. I would use the parentheses if I wanted to do it that way. And keep in mind that the answer is x is greater than negative 4 here, and so I'm shading in this direction instead. Okay? Um, when I was doing the equalities, you notice that I was real quick to make sure that I used my calculator to check my work. And on these ones, I actually didn't check anything. 
Part of that reason is because all these answers I'm getting here are now regions where there are multiple answers for x possible. So it's not as easy as just plugging in the one number that I got for the answer. But I would recommend that you still check your work. And one way to check something like this would be to pick any number in the region that you found the answer to be and make sure that that statement is valid. Okay, so let me validate this. Let me just check this out a little bit. Now here I said x can be greater than negative 4, so it could be 3, it could be negative 1, it could be 0. I'll just check a couple values for x and make sure that the original statement of the inequality is true. Okay, so if x was equal to an easy one like 0, then negative 2x might, uh, is less than 8 would become the statement 0 is less than 8. Totally true. Great. Okay, let me check one more. What if x was equal to negative 2? If x was equal to negative 2, then negative 2 times negative 2, that's positive 4, okay, so I would get 4 is less than 8, and again, that checks out, and that's true. Okay, so this one is especially valuable when I've solved an inequality that involved negative signs because if you forgot to flip the sign, then when you're going through your check, that should tell you and alert you that something went wrong. Okay, so make sure you check your work when you're solving these equations. Uh, let's just go through one more um, inequality and make sure you guys are comfortable with that. This time I'll put x's on both sides of the equation, and might as well throw in a fraction, make that a little tricky. Okay, so this one says 2x plus 1 is strictly less than the quantity x minus 3 divided by 2. Go ahead and pause the video and get your own solution. Okay, so let's see what you got. Um, the first thing I'm going to want to do is get rid of those pesky fractions. You can see there's only one of them, which is divided by 2. So I'm going to take this whole thing and multiply it on both sides by the number 2. This is a positive 2, not a negative 2, so I don't have to flip. If it was a negative 2, I would have to flip the inequality. Okay, it's positive 2. 4x plus 2 on that side. That one stays the same, and this is simply to cancel that there, x minus 3. Now I'm going to bring all my x's to one side and leave the other stuff on the other side. So that's going to be a 3x on that side, and it's a negative 3 minus another 2. So that's negative 5 altogether, and I get the solution that x is strictly less than the simplified fraction, less than negative 5 thirds. Hopefully you got that too, and um, it would be nice to visualize it on a number line if you like to do that. Okay, so I hope that you're now comfortable solving linear equalities and inequalities.